Welcome to Ingenious Academy. I hope you are doing well. Guys, if you are watching my content regularly and coming to my channel for engineering dynamics, do like this video and subscribe Ingenious Academy in order to receive the notification for the upcoming videos. Now I'm going to solve this problem which says that at the instant omega a equals to 5 radian per second, pulley a is given an angular acceleration which is given as a function of the angular displacement that is theta where theta is in radians determine the magnitude of acceleration of point b on pulley c where a rotates three revolutions pulley c has an inner hub which is fixed in its outer one and turns with it so this means that pulley b and pulley c they are rotating with the same uh, angular velocity and the angular acceleration so we we want to find the magnitude of acceleration of point b when a rotates three revolutions we are given alpha as a function of theta so we know that um, alpha theta d theta equals to omega d omega so or we can write that omega d omega is equal to alpha d theta so we can write that omega d omega equals to so we can write um, this alpha uh, in terms of theta so we can write that this is 0 0.8 theta and since we wrote this equation for pulley a so we will write that this is omega a d omega a 0 0.8 theta a d theta a and now we need to integrate this so now we are given that at the instant when omega a is 5 radian per second pulley a is given an angular acceleration of this so this means that we need to integrate this from 5 radian per second to omega a so we so i will write that the initial condition is 5 radian per second to omega a and at the instant when it starts rotation or um, at the instant when we started the observation let's say that the angular acceleration is zero so this will be from zero to theta a so now when we integrate this the left hand side of this equation this will be omega a square divided by two and this will be from five to omega a and this will be 0 0.8 theta a square divided by 2 from 0 to theta a so now if i substitute the these boundary conditions so this will become omega a square divided by 2 minus 5 square divided by 2 equals to 0 0.8 divided by 2 is 0 0.4 and if we substitute these conditions so this will be 0 0.4 theta a square so 1 divided by 2 omega a square is 0 0.5 omega a square and if i bring this to the other side of equation it will become positive so we can write this is 0 0.4 theta a square plus 5 square divided by 2 and now if i divide both sides of equation by 0 0.5 so this will be 0 0.5 and this will be the equation will look like this so this will be omega a square equals to 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.5 so this will be 0 0.8 0 0.8 theta a square plus 5 square divided by 2 into 0 0.5 so that will become 25 and now if we take the square root on both sides of equation this will cancel out and we will have omega a equals to 0 0.8 theta a square plus 25 under the square root and the unit of this will be radian per second now when theta a is three revolutions this is theta a is three revolutions we need to convert this into radians since theta a 
is made the SI unit of the angular displacement is in radians so theta a we can write that theta a is given is 3 revolution and we want to convert this revolution into radians so one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians so revolution will cancel out and we will get 6 pi radians so at 3 revolution omega a will be 0 0.8 into 6 pi square plus 25 under the square root 0 0.8 into 6 pi square plus 25 this gives us omega a equals to 17.59 radian per second similarly we can find we can find alpha a as well so alpha a will be equal to since alpha a is given in terms of theta a so we can add that as 0 0.8 theta a and theta a is 6 pi radian so we can say that this is 0 0.8 into 6 pi so 0 0.8 multiplied by 6 pi this gives me alpha a equals to 15.08 radian per second so alpha a is equal to 15.08 radian per second square now as we can see that pulley a and pulley c they are connected to each other with the help of this belt so we can say that the tangential velocity of gear a that must uh, pulley a must be equal to the tangential velocity of um, pulley c so we can write that v a is r a times omega a equals to r c times omega c and we can say that omega c is equal to r a divided by r c into omega a and similarly the tangential acceleration of uh, we can say that the tangential acceleration of gear a must be equals to the tangential acceleration of gear c as well and we know that the tangential acceleration of gear a will be r a into alpha a equals to r c into alpha c so from this we can write that alpha c will be r a divided by r c into alpha a so now if i substitute all the values in this equation and this equation we will be able to find omega c and uh, alpha c so omega c the angular velocity of pulley c is r a now r a is 50 that is given this is 50 50 divided by r c is 40 mm multiply by omega a omega a is 15.08 so 15.08 so 50 divided by 40 multiply by 15.08 this gives me sorry omega a is 17.59 this is 17.59 right so we have to write 17.59 this is 17.59 this gives me 21.987 so we can say that omega c is 21.987 radian per second so this is the angular velocity of pulley c and similarly we can write that alpha c is r a so again 50 divided by r c we are using these equations into alpha a which is 15.08 so 50 divided by 40 multiply by 15.08 this gives me alpha c equals to 18.85 radian per second square this pulley c has an inner hub and this uh, point b is located on this outer disc and they are connected with each other this disc 
on which point B is located is connected with this pulley C. So they must be uh, moving with the same uh, angular velocity and angular acceleration. So we can say that the omega B will be equal to omega C and omega C is 21.987 radian per second from here. And similarly, we can say that alpha B will be equal to alpha C equals to 18.85 radian per second. Now, in the problem statement, we are asked to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So, there are two kinds of acceleration of this uh, point B. One is the tangential acceleration and one is the normal acceleration. So, the tangential acceleration of uh, point B will be, we can write that a tangential of gear B that will be equal to R B times alpha C. And R B is the radius of this uh, point B is 60 mm. Now, here we have only R B. There is no ratio. It's here. In these equations, there is no need to convert the units of um, this RA and RC since we are con dividing um, RA and RC with the same unit. So, the millimeters cancel out. But here in this equation, we need to convert the units. So, here we, we need to convert this 60 mm into meters. So, this will become 0 0.6. Six, 60 divided by 1000 will be 0 0.06. So, 60 mm is 0 0.06 meters. So, here I will write 0 0.06 into alpha C. Alpha C is 18.85. So, 0 0.06, this answer multiplied by 18.85. This gives me 1.131. So, tangential acceleration of point B is 1.131 meter per second square. And similarly, the normal acceleration of point B will be, we can write that the normal acceleration of point B will be equal to Rb omega C square. Or, or we can say that omega B square, but omega B is equal to omega C. So, Rb is again 0 0.06 multiplied by omega C 21.987. So this will be 0 0.06 multiplied by 21.987 square. This gives me 29. So 29 meter per second square. So the normal acceleration of gear B is 29 meter per second. Now the magnitude of the acceleration will be the magnitude of we can always use the Pythagoras theorem. So the, the magnitude of the acceleration will be a t square plus a b um, a n square of gear b and the square root we can always use the pythagoras theorem so the tangential acceleration of gear b is this 1.131 square plus 29 square under the square root so 1.131 square plus 29 square this gives me 29 approximately 29 meter per second square so this is the magnitude of the acceleration of point b which is located on on the disc which is connected through pulley c with this pulley a and when this pulley a revolves three revolutions then the magnitude of the acceleration of that point b is 29 meter per second square so this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Hibbler Dynamics.